Okay, so let's talk about the various components that there are in an AIS. So one of the first areas is the hardware and the software, the computer hardware software that's being used in the AIS, both at the server level and of course at the client level. So you've got the operating system, you've got the database itself, and you've got the networks that the data and the communications are traversing. The wide area networks, uh, in addition to the local area networks, you've got VPNs that can uh, exist on local area, wide area, and across the internet. Wi-Fi. And various other ways to provide remote access. So all of these are things that need to be reviewed, especially during the controls review, to make sure that the controls, the proper controls are in place. And here are some of the things that we would look for. Let's say in the operating system, well, what does the operating system do? And a lot of us will think about, well, it comes with all these utilities. Well, the operating system at its core is just designed to allow programs to run. It provides a link between all the various components on your computer the software that runs on it, and then any other communications that need to be made. So basically, it's ensuring that the system runs properly. And because most uh, computers nowadays allow uh, multiple programs to run simultaneously, the operating system has to be able to handle all of the requests for resources and processing flow. Okay, so if I'm Excel, I may want to calculate a giant spreadsheet. So I'm going to ask the operating system, give me all the resources you can, but the operating system has to balance that with other programs that are running. So those computer resources get allocated to the applications and uh, even your laptop, uh, but certainly large server-based computers or mainframes that companies use, have lots of users logged into them at the same time, much like uh, all of you can be logged into SAP at the same time to perform work on your various companies. So the operating system handles all that, and then uh, through the use of what is called drivers, allows the CPU to communicate with the memory, with the screen, with the keyboard, and uh, any other devices you may have connected to your computer. So some of the things that we want to pay attention to with the operating system, okay, the operating system should be able to protect itself from the user. We as users shouldn't be able to get into the operating system and you know blow it away or take away files, certainly in a corporate environment. We need to be able to protect, it needs to be able to protect us from each other. So I'm not reaching out and grabbing your files that are in your protected storage area and vice versa. Uh, maybe we're both not trying to update the a file at the same time. Uh, users, protect users from themselves. So I may try and overwrite files. So operating systems now have some pretty sophisticated file handling capabilities where they can allow you to go back to a previous version of a file, for example. Uh, the files, the operating system needs to be able to protect itself from itself as well. So in just in case uh, the kernel a asks to do something it shouldn't, you know, it, it should be able to recover from that. And then, of course, the environment, loss of power, various other components just dropping off at particular times. The operating system shouldn't be brought to its knees through that. Okay.